speeches on television, of course. But television alone will not win the election. Make that an exclamation point, dear. Yes, Morgan. We have a visitor. Arthur Devlin. I said I never wanted to see him again. Well, what do you want? We're in trouble, all of us. You bet we're in trouble. We're trying to win an election. What other trouble? Your wife's death. What about Lily's death? Someone's trying to pry the whole thing open again. If this is a shake Who's doing the prying? Michael Shane. Scare you a little? Shane doesn't work for kicks. Somebody hired him. The New York branch of your insurance company? If they'd had any doubts about an accidental death, they never would have paid on her policy. Janet Bryce hired him. Lily's sister? She was sick in New York when your wife died and couldn't come down, remember? Oh, but it doesn't make sense. She got all the money under the policy. But she doesn't think it was an accident. Says she has letters from Lily that made her suspicious. Well, how do you know? The New York office called. She's taking a Caribbean cruise from there. I have to see her when her ship stops here on the return trip. She's coming here? Yeah. I don't like this. Maureen, what's Mike Shane's telephone number? This is Michael Shane. What's on your mind? Listen, Masters, I'm in and I stay in. I know about the election, but that's your problem. I haven't got time to listen to your threats. Ah, looks like my little trip has caused some excitement. Why? What do you want, Mike? Well, in two words, lay off. Maybe he's right. Mike, I'm your friend, but I was also Lily Masters' doctor. I signed the death certificate, you know that. That's why I asked you to stop over. I want you to tell me all you know before I meet Lily's sister. Well, Lily was a confirmed hypochondriac. She took medicine like candy. She died of an overdose of barbiturates. Pure and simple accident. You sure? Positive. The police autopsy confirmed it. People like that develop a tolerance. They get logy, take more and more, until one day they take too much. Well, the party's getting grim. How about a Bon Voyage drink? No, there isn't time, Tim. I have to be at the airport in an hour. Just remember to give me an exclusive on this when you get back. How long will you be gone? Five days. I pick up the boat in Jamaica tomorrow, and we dock in Miami on the 6th. Gives me a nice little uh, vacation with Janet Bryce. Mm-hmm. Lily once showed me a picture of her sister. Quite a girl. Well, that figures. <laughs> Look, guy, yeah, I hate to have to chase you people out, but I've still got some packing to do. Laura. Tim, do me a favor and take uh, Lucy home with you. Sure. I'll be in touch, Angel. All right, have fun. As if you won't. <laughs> See you later. Bye now. Bye. <laughs> Glass Company, PPG, and DuPont Tellar. First and only never drain antifreeze and summer coolant. Presents tonight's Michael Shane. Okay, Uncle Frank. Yeah, well, right. We'll see you tomorrow night. Bye.
tomorrow night, we were going to paint the guest room for him. Gosh, I don't know how we can do it before then. Oh, there must be a way. There is. The PPG way. With Pittsburgh's rubberized wall hide, the wall paint that's easy to apply and dries in just 30 minutes. With wall hide, you can brighten and beautify any room in a day and have it ready for guests or for your family. You'll find wall hide in many beautiful colors at your Pittsburgh paint dealer, where you see this sign. Look for it. It's your assurance of quality. Because behind this sign are the vast research facilities in paints, glass, chemicals, and fiberglass of the Pittsburgh Plate Glass Company. PPG, where leadership in research leads to a better life for you. to death. You've been gone for hours. Hours? I only left a half hour ago. Who is this? It's me, Marge. Who do you think? Joey, is everything all right? Yeah. Did you kill him? Is he dead? He's dead. Well, hurry home. I'll be waiting.
friend in 204? Yeah. I heard you coming down, didn't know who it was. I got people in here who would like to slick out without paying. See, they're all... Yes. What? No, no, don't do, don't do a thing. Uh, don't call anyone else. I'll be right there. you know what time it is? Never mind what time it is. Just get my car back here and hurry. Well, that's about it. I feel like a book with blank pages. Real amnesia. That's a pretty rare thing, Mike. Well, then maybe you can tell me what happened to the last four days. What's the last thing you remember, Mike, before you woke up? Well, I went out of here. There was a cab waiting. Started to get in. That's it. Tilt. If you had amnesia, and it was caused by a blow, it might have taken another one to bring you out of it. No, well, I got two lumps. Well, what about that blackjack you found? It's not your style. No, not the blackjack or the clothes. Well, did you buy my story? Deadly. Well, whatever you've done or haven't done, Mike, we're still your friends. But you've been in a fight. A man is dead. Now, I could testify about the symptoms of amnesia as long as you like, but a good prosecutor could tear me apart. I'm afraid you're right, Tommy. There's a way to find out what happened in the last four days, if you want to find out. Sodium pentothal? Mm -hmm. Or hypnosis. It'd take a while. You mean a, a hospital? No, not necessarily. We could uh, take a run down to my fishing lodge. Ah, oh, that's no good. Why not, Mike? Well, there's no time. Look, I'm a licensed investigator with an ID on file. My fingerprints must be all over that room. Once they find the body, they'll have me nailed in an hour. All the more reason. They'd never think of looking for you at the lodge. I won't make you an accessory. Anyway, what... What would I be running away from? I, I don't know. Don't you really, Mike? Now, look, Tommy, I'm... I'm tired. I'll... I'll call you later. Tommy. Yeah? Thanks. Well, what are we gonna do, Mike? Better get out of here. 
get in my car and drive me over to Tim's. I'll hide out with him for a while. All right. I'll take these along, too. I don't want to leave any evidence around in case the police come looking for me. Oh, Mike, I, I brought the mail along, too. I had it at the apartment. Thanks, Hazel. All bills, I'll bet. No, here's something else. What? A radiogram from you. Your name is on it. One of those having a wonderful time things. Came from aboard the cruise ship. I'm sure if I'd met Janet Bryce, I'd remember. And I don't. The radiogram is from her ship. Now, someone must have taken my clothes, my identification, and sailed on my ticket. Then sent the radiogram so we think you are all right. What about the rest of the mail? Right here. Did you see this one? The one from Port au Prince? Yes. Yeah. The ship stopped there, didn't it? Yeah. Did you know who it's from? Judging from the handwriting and the perfume, I'd say a woman. Mm. Janet Bryce. Oh? Yeah, what'd she say? Dear Mike, you are a puzzle. Just when you had set my mind at rest about poor Lily's death, you suddenly disappear. I'm sending this to your Miami address, presuming it will reach you there. I'm looking forward to seeing you when the boat docks in Miami. My very best, Janet. You made quite an impression. Yeah, either me or whoever pretended to be me. Michael, why don't we go to the police? Will Gentry's a good friend. He'd have to arrest me, friend or not. Why? You're innocent. Nothing says that's how it has to turn out in court. That's one thing I can't figure. Only one. I wish I had your worries. If you never saw that cabbie, uh, what's his name? Flanagan? Yeah, if you never saw him before, why'd he slug you? Well, it's not the best way to earn a living, but uh, my guess is he was paid for it. Anyone for coffee? Oh, I'd love some. Yeah, it won't be time, Tim. Better get dressed. We're going for a drive. Say, I don't understand about Flanagan. Who paid him? And why? Well, the why is obvious. Someone was trying to keep me from seeing Janet Bryce. Because of Lily Masters' death? Bingo. Hey, Tim, you're not getting dressed for a date. Something's funny about the way she died, or else there'd be nothing to hide. And if Janet Bryce has information to that effect, she'll be in danger. Well, her ship docks this afternoon, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Not much leeway. I'm going to need everyone's help. Well, that's what we're here for. Well, this is where we start. What is it? I found it in one of the pockets of that suit I had on. A rent receipt for the past week. A place at 819 Second Street. I know it. A dump. Say, Mike, I've been thinking. Yeah? If you don't remember anything that happened for the past few days, well... Well, you could actually be guilty of the murders and not know it, couldn't you? Well, thanks a lot. I hear Gentry's looking for a new assistant. Deadly. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. Look, you two wait right here. I'll be back as soon as I can. Right. Well, I made the coffee. Somebody's gonna drink it, even if it has to be me. You know where you're going? On the rent receipt. 109. Well, if you need me, just whistle. I'll be right here. No, you won't. I won't. Tim, go to your office and get me all you can on Jack Flanagan. Flanagan? Mm hmm Act license number 7191. 7191. Got it? Then come back here and pick you up. Right. Mm
turned out to be. DuPont announces Tellar, the first and only never-drain antifreeze. Tellar goes in for keeps. You may add to it, but no costly drain-out ever, as long as your cooling system's okay. If trouble develops, Color Check warns you. Changes Tellar from red to yellow. When the temperature's down, Tellar protects you. When the temperature's up, it's a summer coolant, too. Prevents rust clogging. Oh, you never, 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 never again drain antifreeze from your car again. So get DuPont Tellar, my friend, and never drain antifreeze again. DuPont Tellar. Seven to nine dollars worth of Tellar protects most cars completely. Tellar goes in for keeps. <laughs> Are you having another one of your spells? No. Oh, baby, you're hurt. What happened? I don't remember. I guess I forgot to duck. Oh, poor baby. You want a drink? Got some gin. No, no, thanks. Where have you been since I talked to you? I've never seen his clothes before. I had some blood on the elements. His blood, I, I had to get rid of them. Hmm. I'm so glad you got away clean. I was so worried about you. You got the stuff, didn't you? What? It should have been in his pockets. A little can. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, the can. No, he, uh, he didn't have it. Are you sure? Did you look in his pants and his coat? There wasn't anything on him. Nice double cross. Oh. What'd he hit you with, baby? Blackjack. I saw it. I... A blackjack? You had the blackjack, not him. Well, I, uh... Did you chicken out? You did, didn't you? I told you to stand there, wait till he made the deal, and then belt him. What'd you do, shake hands and then ask him for a drink? No, I don't remember. Look, they'll find the body pretty soon. What difference does it make? Nobody knows you were there. Well, the manager saw me come out. I, he'd recognize me, I think. How could he? Well, he remembered I asked for the room number. What is this? You knew the room number when you left. I forgot, so I asked. Oh, well, we ought to for a while, will you? I don't feel so good. I'm sorry, baby. What's our next move? What do you think? I think I'd better go. Why? They can't tie me in with Flanagan. But you knew him. So? If the cops come around here, they'll find me and they'll nail you at the same time. Well... It's better if I'm not around right now. I guess you're right. Oh, Joey, I'll leave the door open in case I'm gone when you come back. sooner or later. Wait till Lucy hears about this. I'm not married, and you know it. How can you be sure? Well, I can't. 
Just what did you find out about Lily Masters' death before you got conked? Uh, like, uh, who found the, uh, who found the body? Roger Morgan. Masters' troubleshooter? Mm-hmm. There was a rumor at the time that uh, he and Lily were playing around. Did she leave any kind of a note when she died? No. That's why they figured it was an accident. When a woman goes out on purpose, she usually leaves a note. And they said Lily enjoyed being sick, and that people like that don't commit suicide as a rule. Uh, you don't think it was an accident? No. If it was, no one would have reason to be scared. And someone is. Plenty. Married? That's what she says. Well, I can't believe it. Neither can I. Let's, uh, let's just assume it isn't true. Mm. I've got a question. All right, so somebody hit you so you wouldn't connect with Janet Bryce. So it was the dead cab driver and he was hired. How does this, uh, this wife fit in? Well, if we know that, we know the whole story. Well, what about Flanagan? Well, Tim says he was just a small-time loser, had a few odd jobs when he wasn't in prison. He even worked for a master's construction company. Uh-huh, then everything keeps coming back to Masters. We're picking up the pieces too slowly. Janet Bryce gets in at three, and if we don't get some faster answers, she's in trouble. Look, Mike, let me fix you something to eat. You must be starved. No, no, not, not now, Angel, thanks. Dick, go over to my apartment. Uh, Ellis will give you the key. In my desk drawer are the letters from Janet Bryce. Get them over to your sister at the office, huh? Lucy, you go to work as if nothing's wrong. Be our message center until the boat's due in. And pick up Janet Price. Show her the letters to identify yourself. All right. Where will I take her? Uh, get hold of Dr. Thompson and tell him I'm going to take him up on his offer to use that fishing lunch. And Dick, if uh, Lucy has to leave the office before I get back, you wait there for me, huh? Oh, look, why don't I run over to see this uh, Marge Jerome and see what I can pick up? Oh, no. If anything happened, Lucy'd never forgive me. And uh, I'd be out a good secretary. <laughs> Just stay out of trouble, huh? Tim, does Morgan still live in the Master's guest house? Yeah, I interviewed him there last week. It's on the side of the driveway, right? Yeah, I, I know where it is. Strange we've had no report of the murder yet. I think I'd better let Gentry in on things. The cops can help us. This is Michael Shane. I'd like to speak to Will Gentry, please. Hello. Hello, Will. Did you get you up? No. I've been minding the city for the last 25 minutes. What's on your mind? Murder, Will. My, not again. I'm afraid so. Got a pencil? Go ahead. The Argonne Hotel, room 204. Got some answers for me? Almost all of them will, but uh, that'd spoil the fun. So do me a favor, will you? Now what now? Don't tip any of the papers on this. It's Tim Rourke's baby. Okay, but Mike. Yeah? When do I see you? Soon. But uh, there's one problem. What's that? I might be the murderer. Hello, Mike, will you? Uh, Mike! Do you know the Jeromes? Oh, sure. Every day she's out, I pop over to fix some lunch. Then where can I find him? Oh, well, honest, dearie, I don't know where he is. Marge is a nice girl, but she don't talk much. Mind, 
I'm the last one in the world to blame her for having a little fun. But, boy, she just about got rid of that other guy before Joey showed up. What other guy? The guy she picked up with, hack driver, uh, Jack Flanagan was his name. But don't breathe a word about it, dearie. Because she's really nuts about Joey. And if he ever found out she'd taken up with Flanagan, Joey'd kill him. You, uh... You said the victim was expecting somebody. Yes, sir. You see who it was? Well, it's hard to say. Couldn't see his face. Had his hat pulled down real mean. Well, you must remember something about him, his voice, maybe. Oh, yes, yes, his voice. Well, he talked nice enough going up, but coming down, I thought he was going to bite me. Did you uh, see anyone else go up? Could be. I'm not here every minute, you know. Well, that fellow you saw, was he tall or short, thin or fat? Yes, yes, he was. Uh, you know, that's a funny thing. When that fellow come in, I'd say he was about average, just average. But, uh... I may be a little husky. And, uh, coming out? Taller, I think. I don't know. I, you know, I... He, somehow he didn't look the same. Uh, you don't seem to be too sure what you saw. Oh, well, you had on that same hat. Oh, the hat. Oh, by the way, I put a call through to this room just two, three minutes before that guy come down. What they want? Didn't say. Just asked for the room. It was a woman. Never heard a voice before. Yes, well, thank you. You've been a great help. Yes. Well, I always try to cooperate. Oh, that's obvious. Oh, uh, Jackson, um, get anything on those fingerprints yet? Uh, yes, sir. A lot of old prints plus some fresh ones. One set of fresh prints belong to the victim. And the others? They belong to Michael Shane. Without a pickup, I want him. Yes, sir. you send for me. I, I don't think it's safe for us oh, to Oh, shut be... up, Devlin. Mr. Masters will do the talking. But I don't... I'll tell you why I sent for you, Devlin. You're an unknown factor. And what I don't know about, I don't trust. Now, where exactly do you stand? Well, I... You made a deal, friend. I kept it. I did everything you said. Now you panic. Listen, I I'll give back the money. Well, the money is unimportant. You knew there might be trouble when we went into this. You said yourself it was a calculated risk. Well, that's what I thought it was. I thought your wife was dead. I thought nothing would bring her back. But, but now, look, I, I've got a good job with the insurance company. They give me a free hand, but, but if they find I lied, I'm finished. I can take care of you after the election. Not if the police investigate. I'll be charged with conspiracy, and, and then nobody can help me. Oh, this, this whole thing's just getting too tight. Michael Shane is on the case. That, that girl is coming in on the boat today. I... Well, I just can't keep quiet any longer. I've got to do something. Like what? I'm going to Shane. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, too. Did you hear the news on the radio? What news, Maureen? The police are after Michael Shane for murder.
Meet Jack Taylor, lady killer, with the car, the clothes, but no beautiful girl. It seems she had suddenly acquired a very mysterious headache. Later that night, he remembered what he'd heard on the radio. Don't try to brush bad breath away. Reach for Listerine. Maybe that could be it. Maybe I could have bad breath. And if you do remember, Listerine stops bad breath four times better than toothpaste. Germs in mouth and throat cause most bad breath. Toothpaste can't kill germs the way Listerine does, on contact by millions. Toothpaste covers only this small area, but you cover two, three, four times more mouth and throat surfaces the Listerine way, the recommended way of stopping bad breath. Every time you brush your teeth, reach for Listerine, your number one protection against bad breath. Listerine stops bad breath four times better than toothpaste. You better change. You're a wanted man. Temporarily. But my hunch is, you're the one who'll be wanted after I talk to Janet Bryce. Oh, well, nothing she can say can affect me. Not if your wife died accidentally. Oh, she did. The police back me up, so does the insurance company. They're wrong. And you know it, Masters. <laughs> Where do you keep your crystal ball? No need one. Somebody slugged me to keep me away from Janet Bryce and those letters she has. Letters written by your wife. And right now, you're trying to figure out just how much I know. Believe me, Masters, I know plenty. Like what? Like you and your uh, secretary here have more than just a business relationship. I'm not ashamed of it. Marina's a lovely girl. I'm a widower. Lily Masters didn't even know how to act like a woman. She was a child. Roger Morgan didn't think so. I know Lily wasn't faithful to me, and frankly, I stopped caring a long time ago. Hmm. Gives you a good motive, Maureen. You were in love with Masters. Now, if something happened to Lily... Leave Maureen out of this. Why? She killed your wife so she could marry you. Now, that's a lie, and you know it. Then tell me the truth. How did Lily die? Bert! He's already figured it out, Maureen. Lily took her own life. And there was a suicide note, wasn't there? Yes, I didn't find out about it until later. Morgan destroyed it. He was trying to protect me. With the election coming up, it wouldn't have looked good. We bribed an insurance man to keep it quiet. Devlin? Yes. What was in that note? I don't know. I never saw it. Who was Jack Flanagan? He's the man you killed last night. It said so on the radio. Maybe. And maybe Masters here killed his wife and rigged it to look like suicide. Now this or maybe I... Morgan did it, because Lily wouldn't divorce you and marry him. He couldn't have. He loved her. Was it you or Morgan who went aboard that ship posing as me? I think it's time we called the police. You're making a mistake. I told you to stay out of this. Now it's your name.
not your husband, am I? No, no. But you could have been. We would have been so good, Joey. I really like you. You still do. Flanagan brought me here, didn't he? He was supposed to kill me, but he didn't. Why? He's soft, soft. Not like you, Joey. That can you wanted me to kill Flanagan for. That was, that was dope, wasn't it? Yes! Why didn't you get it? I need it! I need it! You're sick! You better get you to a hospital. Hospital? Hospital? I know all about hospitals. I was a nurse once. And I wore white. You, you didn't know that, did you? It was good, too. As Lily. Lily Masters? Were you Lily Masters, nurse? Oh, Lily was sick. She was so sick. Nobody knew how sick she was. But I knew. What was wrong with her, nurse? Oh, This is an emergency. Call the General Hospital and have them send an ambulance to 819 Second Street, apartment 109. Never mind my name. Dick, what are you doing here? Trying to find you. I figured you'd try and question Marge again. Then I saw your car outside, so... What's wrong with her? She needs a fix. I've sent for an ambulance. What did you want me for? There's been another murder. Who? Uh, a guy named Devlin. You know him? The insurance investigator and Lily Masters' death. Where did it happen? In your apartment. Oh, fine. That's all I need. Well, whoever did it slugged me. And that's all I remember. Did you see who it was? No, but I, uh, I found this. No, it isn't mine. And if it doesn't belong to you, then the murderer must have dropped it. You know what it is? I think so. Let's go. games, Doctor. Where is Janet Bryce? She and Miss Hamilton are inside resting. No one's to talk to Miss Bryce until Shane gets here. I am. I wouldn't advise you to try to stop me. Morgan! Well, I'm glad to see you, Mike. I thought for a minute I was going to have trouble. You were going to take Janet Bryce over to Masters, weren't you? I'm not answering any questions. You could have saved yourself a trip. I just heard on the car radio that Masters withdrew from the election. He what? And you're in trouble. Do you know what the penalty is for destroying evidence of suicide? You must, because there's been enough killing to try to cover it up. Even Devlin's murder. Devlin? You act as if you didn't know. I didn't. You followed him. Yeah, but I lost him. Then I had to go down to the docks to find Janet Price. What do you know about Marge Jerome? She was Lily's nurse. Who hired her? Dr. Thompson. Why? Yes, Mike. Why? Take a sip of this, Tommy. What? Go ahead. You know I seldom drink. Well, pretty clumsy for a doctor, huh? There's still plenty left for analysis. What kind of poison did you put in it, Tommy? What are you talking about? Marge Jerome was a junkie. Why did you hire her as Lily's nurse? Well, it's no crime to help a girl rehabilitate herself. No, but when the same girl is Jack Flanagan's woman, the Flanagan I'm supposed to have killed, then something smells, and it smells of dope. What was in Lily's suicide note? She was being blackmailed. She was on dope and she couldn't get the money. The perfect setup, wasn't it, Tommy? 
If the press ever got wind of her addiction, it would ruin her husband. You started her on the habit, and you made it an expensive one. You're crazy. What would I need with the money? I have a nice little practice. That's exactly it, a nice little practice, not big enough to pay for this lodge and that cabin cruiser. You have expensive taste, Tommy. Go on, let's hear the rest of your hallucinations. You hired Flanagan to kill me, didn't you? Me? How could I? I never met the man. Sure you did, through Marge Jerome. And you killed Devlin because he found you in my apartment searching for Janet's letters. But what you didn't know was that your name wasn't mentioned in the letter. Well, in that case, you haven't an iota of proof for these ridiculous accusations, hmm? This is part of a caduceus, Tommy. You recognize it? Symbol of the Army Medical Corps? Broke off your ring when you slugged Dick. That's why you're not wearing it now. How many other doctors in Miami, Mike? Plenty. But none in this case. You were Lily's doctor. You hired Marge Jerome, and that makes you it. She's too sick to talk right now. She saved my life, in a way. Talked Flanagan out of killing me. That left me alive. A very uncomfortable situation for Thompson. Well, the two of them were trying to blackmail Dr. Thompson, right? Mm-hmm. They threatened to expose him unless he handed over a can of narcotics. But Marge had a triple cross in mind. She wanted to get rid of Flanagan. And knowing that I had amnesia, she decided to use me to kill him and grab the dope. Nice girl. Now, what happened to Flanagan? Well, Thompson killed him before I got there. Then I came in, and he slugged me, figuring I'd be blamed for it. And Thompson kept the can of dope. Right. Seems like this Miss Jerome had quite a crush on you. Oh, she, she did. But I had amnesia, remember? Oh. Well, you'll have to come downtown, Mike, while we straighten out the details. But I don't think you've got anything to worry about on the Flanagan charge. Shall we go, Miss Bryce? Absolutely sure that you don't remember anything that happened between you and that girl? Angel, do you know what I think would be nice? No, what? A little cruise on the Caribbean. Moonlight on the water. Soft music. You know, I think my sister's just a little gullible. Deadly. <laughs> Imagine an automobile wheel without a tire. But add rubber in the form of a tire. Mm-hmm. It helps. Now, 
Rubber tires are not exclusive with Oldsmobile, but what is exclusive is the way Olds engineers have taken live rubber and used it at more than 90 points to insulate you from noise and vibration. Rubber to soak up engine vibrations, to cradle the radiator, to insulate the front suspension, to eliminate vibration in the steering system, to house drive shaft joints, to cushion at rear suspension points. Add to this two Oldsmobile exclusives Vibratune body mountings to virtually eliminate vibration and twin triangle stability for a steadier ride. The result? An indescribably smooth and quiet ride. And you can try it now at your Oldsmobile quality dealers. Here are some exciting moments from next week's Michael Shane mystery. I hope you're not in a hurry. I like to start my day leisurely. Time in the world. Oh, Lou, honey, this is the Michael Shane. Oh, honey, I never saw him before in my life. Honest. She's telling the truth, Lord. I warned you on the phone, didn't I? Huh? Shane was presented by Pittsburgh Plate Glass Company, PPG, and by DuPont Tellar, first and only never drain antifreeze and summer coolant. Four Star Production.